Okay, sorry about that. Don't ask why it's dark. But welcome to another great post race. Because literally, when the light laps were winding down, it was like like more and more of a rage review. But thanks to the Jimmy Johnson spin, <laughs> Denny, who right there, whoops, can't zoom out, zoom in or out. Sadly, took the L. So Denny Hamlin took the L. Yes. But anyways, so stage one. Denny sadly won stage one via the competition caution. And then Kryl, who tried shoving up Joey on the wall. Logano did get damage, but overall, he got that car 14. Like, literally, he's a beast at surviving rounds. Because, like, if anything happens to him, he aces. I mean, aces that, um, that round. And then stage number two was, I believe, Chase Elliott. And stage number three... Was when super speed was when drivers were practicing for super speedway racing. That's gonna happen next weekend. Hopefully, it's not crappy. If Logano chokes, but at the same time survives, there's not gonna be a rage review. So, like this, honestly, is not gonna be a rage review. Even though Kryle actually did something he wasn't supposed to do, shove up Logano. And there's Kurt Busch right there. You could barely see him just because. Oh, wait, I forgot. It's magic, so... So, yeah. Um, then the first driver that choked was Jimmy Johnson. And as a result, each of these cautions went harder on Denny Hamlin. And then, um... What else happened? Oh, um... What do I forget? Oh, yeah, John Hunter Nemechek. He was up there for a while, but then he spun, so... John Hunter Nemechek should go back to laundry duty... Maybe he can wash my clothes. I'm kidding, no. And then, um, like, Matt Benedetto, he was close. Like, that could have been Wood Brothers Racing's 100th vi- No, video? What am I thinking? 100th win. Like, literally. Last time they won was when Paul Menard had his only win. And, like, in the Cup Series at Indianapolis. And yes, I do remember him winning World America in 2016. So... Yeah, something about that. And then William... No, wait. So, um, Christopher Bell hit the wall not once, but twice. And as a result, William Byron just came straight up into him and spun himself around. Restarts kind of got crazy, I'm not gonna lie. Denny Hamlin, like... Hamlin was so close, but he never did. Aw, aren't you gonna cry to your wife and your children that you didn't win? Aw, well, shut up, nobody cares about you. So yeah, Denny Hamlin took not one, not two, not three, not four, but five L's. He was leading the whole time and like, like literally, it was like more and more of a rage review for me. But since I got virtual school tomorrow and I know it's a virtual school night for me, I'm doing a race review before I go to bed because, you know, I have to get to bed because like, you know, I'm, I... I have to, because, you know, school's more important, sadly. So, this is going to be a 10-minute review, as usual. And, yeah, um, I, on like, last time Kurt Busch won was at Kentucky of 2019, when Bubba Wallace brought out the caution just to have Logano choke. Logano had a crappy start. And then, like, Cryo Bush, aka his, his idiotic brother, came up and congratulated him. Which, Kyle shouldn't have done that. He should have thrown a tantrum that he didn't win. So, that's what Kyle should have done. And, yeah, hopefully, like, if Kurt Busch fails inspection, Matt Benedetto is going to get that win. So, Kurt Busch, on to the next round of the round of eight. I can't believe he's on to the next round. La I I think the last time he made it to round of eight was, I know for a fact... Um, Cheapest, I don't know my playoffs, but I remember 2015 at Martinsville because I remember when him and Matt Kenseth collided on the back straightaway. This was before when Kenseth dumped Logano. So, yeah, I I can't believe Kurt Busch is on to the next round. I'm just saying, I can't believe he's on to the next round. But once the round of 12 is over, I'll update my playoff predictions as usual because you'll um, normally, um, you know... But, like, honestly, I'm glad this race ended, like, before I have to get to bed. Because, like, you know, 
like last time we raced on a on Sunday nights. Well, like, but we, we, I can't talk. If it's for people who have school, last time they raced like that was as of 2014. You know the Jeff Gordon Brakizowski incident. I don't know why they set the um time for six central time because you know I live in Chicago. And I still have some leftover, you know, channel intros to Legal Helpline, which that I will try to do tomorrow. I will try, but it all depends. Like, I'll try. So maybe another NASCAR skit. Maybe, um, oh, you know what? Legal Helpline infomercial clips is going to, like, a new one. But you're going to have to guess which one. Hint, it's the one I've been, like, hint, it's the peg warming, you know, Peg warming infomercial, like, you know, the product that knew for decades that it could cause cancer and fail to warn consumers. And, like, it's, it's, you know, a peg warming infomercial that, like, goes around, you know, it's a peg warmer. It's just like the Danico Mean Tea, Danico Care UZ or Care UZ, the um, Synergy, and I don't know what that other racer is. Um, trunk fresh peg warmer, bumper safe peg warmer. What other peg warmers can I think of from Kurz? Oh yeah, the three generic main characters: Owen Wilson, Richard Petty, and the Cryl. Well, the pre Cryl himself. So yeah. So honestly, good race. Well. Most of the race wasn't good because Denny actually was leading the race and Joey was like one to two laps down. But hey, he got the car 14. So yeah, great race. He's actually above a cut line, which he's going to have to survive Talladega. Like we like me, like we got to survive Talladega. We got to survive the big one. Like although last year, like we got in a big wreck. And we managed to get that car, what, 14th, I believe, something like that. 16th, 13th, I I remembered, but now I don't. Um, Let's just say top 15. And, like, honestly, I, like, the round of 12, like, I kind of feel confident that Lugano's going to survive Talladega. As long as no one gets into him. So, just so that drivers are aware... They better not get into Logano or collect Logano in a wreck because, trust me, you don't want to test my gangster because last time I had a rage review was at Daytona, which it's almost going to be a month since that rage review was posted. It's literally, like, I can't even talk right now. All I can say is that I'm glad for Kurt Busch, and I'm glad he won this race, and, like, I do like him as a driver, but, like, I didn't like him previously because, you know, he had dumped, well, he and Byron both dumped Logano, and, yeah, so, I don't even know what to say right now. Like, I kind of wished Matt Benedetta would get a win, but, like, Wood Brothers Racing used to be a five-star team back then. Like, they literally used to, but now they're not. They're more of a four-star team. Like, it's honestly more of a four-star team. But with seven championships, and they use, like they were only underfunded for, like, one year. And that was in 2015, despite when Ryan Laney drove that car. And don't ask why I'm pronouncing it like that, because I can, folks. Oh. You know what? I'm going to shut up. So, ye. Good race, honestly. Like, what can I say for the last 45 seconds? I don't know. Honestly, don't know. I might as well just start talking random until the video ends. So, yeah. All I can say, no rage review, luckily. Because I remember, like... Like, I felt like that, like, Preston Racing had the whole Rage review, and I thought it was going to be my turn to Rage. Because, like, like Daytona, I Rage, and then the whole round of 16, it was Preston Racing. And, like, the one before that was Daniel Knudsen. 
And then before that, at Michigan, I believe it was press and racing. So, um, yeah, press and racing. Ever since my Kansas Rage review, it was mostly press and racing that did it. Oh, wait, I forgot. It's overtime. Bye.